Good morning, intern. I'm so glad you're here. I have nursed the tortoises through the night, and it seems like our tiny little crew is going to be able to make it, which is a huge relief. Look at how many there are now. What are you doing, little spurred tortoises? But I do believe that the reason that they got so sick all of a sudden was because we do have a significant lack of zookeepers on this side of the zoo. So let's go ahead and we are going to grab this man. Ooh, apparently our desert monitors aren't doing well either. Well, I'm glad he knows what to do. He's taken to his task right away. We'll have him take care of this area. So he's going to be kind of our desert keeper, which applies for most of this this particular zoo, our safari zone, but still. All right, how you doing, little guys? All right, everybody need a little bit more water? I'll get you a little bit more water. Fill up this empty water. How's everybody doing? I'll put some water over there. Oh, there's some poop. Let's scoop that up. Oh, and speaking of scooping poop, intern, you know what? I would be betting that, especially because of our prolific and very poop-filled lemurs, we could be making a lot of extra money uh, running a compost bin. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can find a nice little uh, compost heap. Just think of all the excitement that that would get all of the, the gardeners in the area. Personally, if I knew someone in the area selling exotic poop, I would be rather inclined to try it out in my garden just to see how it would do. What is this? What are you? Who knows what that is? But, you know, there's, there's many a gardener who's also so inclined. Don't roll your eyes at me, intern. I am telling the truth here. There are people out there who will try anything in their garden just to see if it's going to be successful or not. And here we go. Compost building. We're actually going to leave this one, like, behind here. In fact, I've got an idea, intern. Why don't we turn this little area, let's see, high indoor fence. I need another high fence. Or even, hmm, hmm. See, already, first thing in the morning, ah, stretch. Let all of those those muscles crack, uh, crack and pop and just get those bubbles put in there. Did you know, intern, I read an article yesterday that when you pop your muscle or when you pop like your knuckles, you're not actually popping bubbles, you are actually creating bubbles. And they, they had a scan of it. I think the MIT team did it. Somebody made a scan of it and I was very, very impressed as one can be impressed by uh, that kind of research. And apparently it's got beneficial good things for you. So all those people who are always like, oh, don't crack your knuckles, then then you never know like how you'll feel and blah, blah, blah. Well, they don't need to worry. So let's see, we've got this. The lemur keepers are gonna be busy 24 seven. So let's go ahead. Ah, oh, our, precious, our precious poopy lemurs. We'll go ahead and put a couple gates over here so we can have constant like flow of traffic. Um, ooh, look at that coast rock path. Interesting. What does this look like? Ooh, it's actually very pretty. I like it. I like it. All right, we'll put that down. Uh, actually, not right there. We'll just leave that dirt because it's going to get exceptionally, exceptionally messy pretty soon. Uh, in fact, we'll leave that alone too because we'll put some plants there. But what are we using down here? Ah, the very beautiful safari path. But also this one, look at all the kids in the playground. Oh, it always makes me so excited when I see the children engaging in playing like that. In fact, let's just swap this out. Yeah? Nah, I like the other one better. Ah, and we're wasting money in turn. So really, when you decide on a path, you should just trust your instinct and stick to it. Um, let's see, let's just get this, this little thing. There we go, nice little curve. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see. Just a wee bit more. And this way. Well, we don't really need it to be too tile, do we? All right, and we will fill the rest of this area in. Let's see, as we develop the zone, because I'm pretty sure we could fit something in over here. I'm thinking it could even be, um, we already have a playground. It could be the gift shop. We could put like the gift shop over here and do another little viewing area from this angle and hopefully people will just be far enough away from the exceptional scent of the compost heap that they won't worry about it. In fact, let's put this jungle path down over here. Yeah, I like that quite a bit actually. And then over here to let's find some nice smelly flowers to try to mask the smelly smell of the compost heap because it is going to uh, it's going to reek. 
Not gonna, not gonna lie, intern. It's not gonna smell like a bed of roses, even if we put a bunch of roses around it. All right, a lot of monsoon grass. And what else could we put down here? <laughs> the ever-present bilberries that I seem to want to put down everywhere. I don't know why. I just have a thing for bilberries, it seems. Oh, these little guys. They're kind of cute, funny little plants. See, look at them. Aren't they just the honest little things? We'll have to study them up and see uh, what, like, if you know anything about this plant intern, then let me know. Like, if we put it down and we get a good look at it. I mean, just look at this. Isn't it just the most interesting little thing? I'm fascinated by it. You can also already, like, hear the flies buzzing around the compost heap. Well, that's good. All right, come here, you little thing. You can you can go and be a bit of a enigma just sitting right over there. All right, let's just fill this up. Any other... Ooh, that's better. Like, nice flower bed. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to make my poor, my poor zookeepers suffer while they're over here. Lavender! <laughs> You know what? Let's just go ahead. We're going to sprinkle in some nice bits of lavender. And then we'll toss in like some other plants. Whatever we, we happen to find that seems appropriate. Maybe a nice low-lying bush. A monstrosa. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. This is what we need for the lemur exhibit, too. There we go. Nice little ones. Sprinkle them around. But we'll come back. I know we said we would work on this in stages back here. It's just useful to have a few more plants to throw in there. Okay, what about these ones? Yeah, pretty interesting. Pacific plants. Okay, okay. I'm looking more for like a smelly... Ooh, here we go. Pink lady slippers. Cherokee grass. You know what? We'll just leave it... I think we'll just leave it... Some... Lavender. And let's put the lavender out here too. Let it be on both sides of the fence. A little bit of discreet lavender, and then we'll put in a little bush. And hopefully that'll be enough to keep everybody from... Ooh, there we go. Interesting. Where are you from? The Canary Islands, huh? Ooh, very interesting. But we probably should scale back a little bit and go for something slightly more... Mm, yeah, like this guy. Yeah, he'll do. He'll do. There we go. Now I'm pleased. All right, and so this will be where the staff kind of hangs out when they aren't running around collecting poop and things like that. In fact, let me go ahead. Do I want that lamb or do I want... Let's get a killy tree. Like a couple killy trees over here. Come here, little killy tree. You never know what kind of tasks you're going to end up getting into on a day-to-day -day basis in the zoo, intern. And I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. Though do not forget, intern on earth let's just get that one down out of the way but do not forget in turn that we do actually have the oh, get out of the way you little like wrong colored i don't want dead ones mixed in my my gardening staff is quite diligent i'll have you know <sighs> where was i i was saying something important in turn ah look at the umbrella acacia tree of course of course why didn't i think of that i'm putting down the little low desert fence very nice to just kind of guide people to staying on this side of the path. I like it. I like it. Look at that. We'll turn this into another area. Good. I need some, I need some, like, nice bushes to mix in with these monstrosas, though. But yes, in turn. Uh, yeah, you never know what you're going to get up to working, <laughs> working in the zoo. And I know I say that every day, but it's just, it holds true every day. We do need to, like, go and worry about the warthogs in just a little bit. I need, like, a low-lying, low-lying savanna bush of some kind. Or what are you? Very lovely. That's what you are. Let's see. Uh-huh. Shepherd's tree. Hmm. I think I need something a little bit more like this for this zone. Look at you, you silly thing. Yeah, I think that'll do, and then we'll just mix in, like, a bunch of ferns and things like that to fill in the gaps. All right, that's better. And hopefully this means that we'll actually make money off of the exceptionally prolific pooping of our lemurs. We should put some toadstools over here, because, of course, there's going to be toadstools in the poop. There we go. There! Ah, it's kind of funny how, how the cycle of the zoo does rotate quite a bit around the subject of poop. 
But that is honestly just, you know, you got to feed the animals and you got to take care of uh, what happens after you feed them. Just the cycle of it. Anything else? My gosh, there's so many things. I forget. And then we finally get access to the greenhouses again in turn. And I just, uh, you know me, it's so hard to tear me away from these. They're so pretty. Oh, look at the little, I'm putting a couple little, there we go, hiding some pitcher plants in here. Here we go. This is more what I was looking for. Just a nice low-lying fern. We don't need anything fancy. There, that's better. I feel better. We now have a compost heap. That should work out quite well. The poop is being scooped. We have uh, some really good... Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, we have some people assigned to taking care of these areas. Uh, oh, who was putting the crate? And now it's time to actually work. Why are you here? Okay, intern. Now it's time to worry about our rhinoceri. And I think that we have two problems going on here. The first of which... Oh, jeez. I thought that was... <laughs> I really thought that was a jeep that had somehow gotten misplaced. But alright, so just so you know where we're headed and where we're coming from, right over here are the, the wonderful lemurs and their exhibit, which we need to deck out again. And then if we come this way, the meerkat, like the playground's right here with the ice cream. And then the meerkats are right over here in their awesome exhibit. We have a little restroom, some nice flowers, come through this tunnel. Apparently there's a squeaky toy out here. Okay, that's fine. One of the animals must have thrown it out. And over here you've got all the giraffes and things. And over here you've got all the rhinos. And I have a theory that one of my rhinos... Hello everyone! Has busted the fence. So we're going to walk along the fence really quickly. Let's see. I thought I saw something moving down there. No? Why hello Mr. Warthog. How are you today? Having a bit of a hard time about it, eh? How's that? Ooh, listen to him squeal. Oh my gosh. What is going on over here? Why is Kiki in a crate again? Meerkat 15 is giving birth. That's a good thing. It looks like they've all been playing with their toys. Ugh, let's try to separate some of the barrels. Come on. Off you go. Off you go. That's right. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Trying to work here. Alright, good. The water's filled. There's a little warthog to wash. Look at them! Just walking around. We better make sure we have some warthog caretakers. That might be a big part of the problem. You guys and your rocks, I swear. Alright. So everything looks good. Black Rhinoceros 1 is really hungry. Just like with our lemurs turning out to have major issues, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of why our warthogs and rhinoceri are also having major issues. I forgot how beautiful their exhibit is. But I do have one uh, concern. Hello, big one. Another crate. Why? I mean, the fence actually isn't broken. I'm following it along the whole thing. Aha! Here's where the fence is broken. So our fence did get busted in. I see this. There. <laughs> I saw that warthog trying to escape. But I wonder if this is big enough. Let's see. Stretches into the cheetah area. Rhinoceri is not big enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a secondary extension now that we have the extra money to be able to do it. That's going to let people pass one, two, three. Yeah, and then we're going to make a nice long extension where there's going to be more room for the, the rhinoceros, more room for the warthogs, because they appear to be breeding exceptionally successfully, which I don't think we really anticipated when we first started this project. There we go. Oh, that makes me happy. Don't worry, you guys. Hang in there. After all, we do have the black and white rhinoceri. I wonder if the black rhinoceri has any mates. We're going to have to make sure that there are mates available. All right, let's come in here. Nice tropical savanna. Get that spread down. Beautiful coloring, isn't it? I love the sod from the tropical savanna. And you know what the word sod means, right? In turn, it's kind of like little clumps little clumps of um, of grass, like square cuts of grass that you lay down in little, little patterns and it helps the grass spread about. There we go. This should take care of our warthog problems. Give them more area to roam, make them happier. All right. The tor tortoises are being constantly healed. We might have to add more 
Yeah, they must be pooping a lot. We might have to actually release some of them from uh, from their <laughs> the the zoo. We might actually have to send some of them to another institution so that there's less poop in the tortoise tank, like tank, the tortoise area. All right. Okay. So there's places for them to sleep, places for them to bask. Come here, you fussy, fussy warthogs. And this way we might be able to keep them out of the way of the jeep a little bit better. Look, everybody's coming down over here to see what's going on. All right, so let's get some of the grass put down. Oh, I imagine the warthogs would be very happy to root around in a hollow log with insects. So let's go ahead and get some of those guys down too. We'll put down a little cluster of insects next to a termite mound, if I can find one. Did you know, in turn, that the warthogs actually quite enjoy rubbing up against termite mounds to try to scratch off, uh, like, any pest that may have gotten on them? I thought that was really fascinating when I learned about that. But yeah, so they'll scratch up against rocks, they'll scratch up against termite mounds to try to, like, dislodge any, any insects that might be on them, any parasites that's given them a problem. And that's also why you see the bee eaters that we put in these kinds of exhibits are our bee eater like right here, who's complaining about the poop. I guess we just need more zookeepers overall, geez louise. Uh, but that's why, oh, see, check that out. That there may look like rhino poop to you, but to me that looks like money. Ooh, and look at the rhinos, they really love these umbrella acacia trees. They're rubbing up against these. So I'm gonna put a few of them down. Hang on, there we go. And I think I hear the meerkats being fussy. All right, there we go. So we've got those now. All right, what else would we need? Ooh, more, more food troughs, that's for sure. And we'll move those kind of down here. Since it seems like there's a bit of a crowding issue. Yeah, if we move them down here, then the animals are more likely to come down this way. And that should make them feel a lot better. If they have more room to eat, more room to relax. Yeah, look at this poor zookeeper. Like, ah, oh, there's so much going on. All right, what else can I do for you, rhinos? You got somewhere to, to lay down. You got some food. Let's get some water. Um, I wish I could just do, like, water. But, you know, they're so stubborn. That's the problem, is that these guys are so, so stubborn about drinking water just from where they want. So... We'll just put like a couple of water troughs back here, lined up, and oh, some durians! Everybody loves durians, it seems. Maybe like some salt, something to rub against, some more tires to kick around. And what do you want, little warthog, huh? You like the tires too, you like the salt. Everybody loves apples, we can try to lead them into the new area. Hello, everyone. You want some yummy, crunchy apples? Come this way. Now the warthogs and the rhinoceri should be a little bit happier. Because they'll be able to wiggle their way this way. Let's also get the ball with rattle. They might enjoy that. Put another one. Oh, yep. There goes. There goes an apple. I'm telling you, worrying about warthogs. Oh, and we're losing some of the lemurs to old age, but that's to be expected. Now, why are you complaining, huh? Come over here. Don't be a complainy pants. There, I think that'll make that warthog a lot happier to kind of be like out of the way. And there. Oh, the Gila monster is pregnant. Why are you loose? Or why are you in a crate? I mean, and not loose. All right, come here, black rhinoceros number two. Maybe that's why the other black rhinoceros was like, I'm lonely. Because its potential mate was trapped. <laughs> I'll choose you. Very thirsty. Come over here. All right, and hopefully now it's just a matter. Here's another one. Oh my gosh, everybody's in crates back here. You poor little ones. I'll have to walk and make sure that the fence is not broken just one more time. Come here. Oh my gosh, you're stuck. Hang on, this tree's in the way. Scooch over tree. Let me let me get the crate. There we go. Out you go, sweetie. Whew, I think that's everybody. I think I hear a geyser. All right, there we go. Is there a geyser over here? There sure is! Check that out! No wonder everybody's happy. Look at that. They're like, woohoo, this is the best ride ever! Probably is really awesome. All right, so last check. Yeah, there we go. The fencing has been repaired. 
I don't see any broken pieces. We did have an earthquake here once, didn't we? So actually, even though the rhinos probably could break the fence to smithereens if they wanted, I don't think they have been. Alright, so let's walk along here. Yeah, that's good. Good, good, good. And the warthogs seem pretty content. They're washing and rolling around in the mud, which is a thing warthogs like to do. Good! Whew. Well, that was a lot of updating, a lot of work all at once in turn. Oh, but look, we have happy animals everywhere, so that's a good thing. My gosh. Alright, Black Rhinoceros 2 is really thirsty. Oh, she had to go and eat an apple first. Silly girl. But alright, so let's go get something to drink, because I'm pretty thirsty myself. And then we will start kind of working away. Hmm. I wonder if we can flip the tunnel. And we will try to make this area quite a bit uh, quite a bit nicer. And just make sure that the warthogs and the rhinoceri are doing quite well. There's a lot of them too. My gosh, they must be breeding well. Alright, so I'll see you after lunch in turn. Bye-bye!